Greetings, my excellent friend. Welcome to the most excellent adventure to heavy metal history. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the Heavy Metal History Podcast, my guest for this episode is Jean-Francois Dejeuner. Did I get it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Uh, he is the guitarist of the band Cataclysm, a uh, legendary death metal band from Cataclysm, uh, I should say, uh, from Canada, sorry. And uh, thank you for being on the podcast, man. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad to be here. And it's, it's nice and refreshing to talk about the... Like the the heavy metal rest history and all that. Yeah, that's that's like why I started this man because I was fascinated about where everything started and originated and how it evolved over time and even with uh -huh. just bands themselves, you know, because so many bands make shifts in their sound over the years and I mean your band especially, uh -huh. uh, it's incredible to kind of get the behind the scenes of how that all came about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we started uh, so, so long ago, it seems, but it's not that long in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's almost, a, a, we're a, almost at the third year mark, and it's a, a lot of stuff happened, but it, it's, it's cool to talk about the roots and how things came to be and all that. Yeah, so let's let's start there, man. Uh, let's go all the way back to around, I would assume, 94, uh, when mm -hmm. when sorcery was just starting to kind of get written, I would assume. Maybe maybe longer even. I don't know the full story. So let's kind of go into where sorcery originated. Yes. I mean, I, I joined the band in October of 1991. So that's, that's when me and, and the boys got together for the first time. We all met in in high school actually in detention because we, we were like the bad guys in, in, in high school and, and uh, the, the like we had our little uh, heavy metal band of brothers there and um, we we I met the, the, the other guys in Cataclysm in detention and we decided to start a band and have the first rehearsals and all that and we actually real quick got together started to make a lot of noise and we pissed off a lot of neighbors and our parents and all that and uh like any good band would start <laughs> yeah. and uh we started putting songs together we uh, wrote three songs which consisted of the first demo uh, we recorded these three songs in 1992 and wow. uh the vision we had uh, for those three songs was was to be the most chaotic extreme thing that the planet ever saw as a band band <laughs> and uh, that, that was our idea and we want to be uh, super uh, intense and, and uh, some of our influence at the time uh, were like the the, the british uh, bands like Boltor and carcass and uh, oh, they, nice. like they're i'm talking about like the early early stuff uh, uh, when they started and they were like super crazy and we, we we were into that stuff and then we met this guy uh, that became our singer uh, in the band on the on the first on the first uh, three release that we did, mm -hmm. so he was really into the the mystical side of things, like uh, that that was his his passion, and he was a great lyricist and a crazy personality to have in a band. Mm -hmm. So so he brought the whole occult uh, team to Cataclysm when we started, and um, we which was fine with us because we didn't really know what our band should be about we just wanted to play music and be loud so and he came up with all these crazy concepts and we started uh, throwing ideas together and putting these songs recording all these songs and uh, th that led to a contract that we got with nuclear blast records when their record label was only like not even five years old oh wow so so we were one of the original 10 bands that they signed in the beginning uh, of nuclear blast and i think out of the, these 10 bands there's only like uh, maybe two or three left and we're one of them and then there was hypocrisy that's still around and uh, i believe uh, meshuga was there also and about that time yeah. and uh other than that it's, it's it's like they started also as a label that with marcus started the label in in in, uh, in a bedroom in germany <laughs> and, yeah. and it became this big uh, multinational of uh, independent music and and uh, we 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 uh, we became better also and, and more known as a band, but that was pretty much the beginning. And the sorcery was uh, the first album on on that Nuclear Blast contract that uh, saw the day. And 
we uh, we wanted to to uh, yeah that's we just wanted to be young and loud and be an extreme band and that that was the beginning of of it all now i'm not i'm not super super familiar with the the kind of early days of the canadian metal mm-hmm. scene but around the time you guys were coming up obviously voivod had been around and like anvil but i'm not really sure of other bands who might have been your peers like were were any of those guys like were you friends with them or you know go to their shows yeah, Voivod, I saw them live many times. I think they were very respected in, in the scene. Um, and I, I always liked their earlier stuff. I think they're a great band. They, yeah. they, they pushed the boundaries somewhere else of what metal is. And, and it was inspiring in that sense where you don't have to uh, stick to a formula. You try to do something new and innovative. And Voivod was pioneer in that uh, for sure. Yeah. And uh, there was a band that I really liked uh, from uh, Toronto called Sacrifice, a trash band that was making noise at that time. But they, I, I'm not even sure if they're around anymore, but they put out like three killer trash records in, oh, wow. in, uh, in that area and that time. And I, I like those guys a lot. Um, I mean, when we started, we were friends also with the, this other band in our jar called uh, Cryptopsy. Oh, yes. Duh. And and we actually shared a rehearsing room. Um, our first rehearsing room that we ever got was with those guys when we we had half the week to go rehearse, and they they would have the other half the week, and then we kind of started at the same time and had a little bit of the same vision, but different of how we want music to be, and and um, it's it was good days, you know. I I, I really loved my uh, the, the, those times where we just. Uh, finish school and go right up to the rehearsal room, yeah. <laughs> drink, a, drink a few beers and, and uh, write down some riffs and killer music. And it was, it was the good old days for me. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's go into the kind of the writing process for sorcery. You know, when you guys were kind of getting together and writing everything, it's obviously mm-hmm. a lot different than it is nowadays. Um, would you guys just kind of like rehearse stuff in the moment and then kind of, how would you keep track of the riffs basically for songs that you were writing? We were uh, we were try- writing in, in a rehearsal space, all of us together. Uh, most of the times we would come in early, me and Mauricio, mm-hmm. uh, and and work on the songs themselves, like the the structures and all that. I, I was pretty good at coming up with riffs, uh, riff ideas, and Mauricio was the guy that was good with arranging uh, the songs. So we would kind of sit together and put things together, and and then the singer would come in a little later, and we show them what we got and then he, he would come up with lyrics and uh, the drummer we, we would we would uh, work all that together afterwards and, and make songs but we had zero experience uh, we also were very new at playing our instruments mm-hmm. I was maybe a guitar, a guitar player for uh, like a few years then because I, I picked up a guitar maybe six months to a year prior to joining the band so oh, wow. it, everything was new and it was kind of a uh, it was it was out of like good art because we didn't really have skills or or knowledge <laughs> <laughs> we just did the best we could and all, and and we learned to do all this stuff at the same time so that's why like if you go back to the for those who don't know the early stuff you'll you'll go back to the beginning of our discography and and for a lot of people the music won't make sense but it made sense to us then. It was controlled chaos, and and uh, that was that's it. Like a, a bunch of angry teenagers trying to write something. And as as we went along in our career, we kind of learn how to do everything better. We learn our instruments. We learn how to play. We learn how to write songs and uh, and piece things together. And we also discover our sound because we kind of. You, you're not sure how you want to sound like at the beginning. You just try to do your best, but eventually yeah. you kind of you kind of figure out. Okay, we love a certain type of guitar tone. We love drumming a certain way, and and um, then then you can kind of craft the sound of the band. And and I think it was a long period for us because we were really new to this. So it probably took us a, a few records for sure to kind of get into that sound that we like, and then push that further and further and that, that's pretty much our our, um, our journey into this yeah very very few bands kind of nail their sound right off the bat it usually takes a couple records to really refine and figure out what they're trying to go for just due to like 
you know, learning new things, like you said, or even member changes, bringing in something fresh. And it's always exactly. interesting to see that evolution and development over the course of records. And I mean, you guys have so many records. So uh, it's it's interesting to listen to each one and see how things kind of progress and change over the years, even even with the new stuff now, uh, which mm-hmm. I want to get to in a minute. But uh, yeah, you it's 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 really cool because, you know, for let's see, how should I word this? I think really because of, you know, the time that you guys were in was such a good time for heavy metal that when it was something new like that, you guys had unlimited things at your disposal to really try and experiment with. And I I think that's awesome that you guys were kind of at the forefront of that. Yeah, it it was a new jar. So the doors were really open and to for for create creativity because uh, nothing was 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 done yet it was an exploration and yeah we're very proud to be uh, at the forefront of that and uh, we we one thing that i really like is uh, when when a younger musician or people that just started playing like come up to me or write me on, on my social media and tell me like you're such an, an influence you, you got because of you guys i wanted to pick up a, a guitar or a drum kit and or a bass and start playing and writing music and to me that's such a compliment and and makes me feel uh, good about uh, everything we've done as a band and i i it's like passing the torch to a new generation of metalheads yeah and i i like that whole uh, cycle idea of of things so uh as far as the recording of the first album you know i'm sure budget was non-existent back then for you guys possibly Mm -hmm. um uh how how much did you guys spend on making the record and how long did it take to kind of uh record everything we were lucky to have um, a, a guy that helped us that helped us negotiate our first record deal with nuclear blast mm-hmm. so we did manage to get a little bit of a budget to record so our first album we um, i think they gave us something like twelve thousand euros or it, it, i mean for today's standard, it seemed like a decent money, but for yeah. back in the day, it wasn't that much because uh, studio cost was super expensive oh, yeah. and the pr- producers and all that. And uh, so we ended up working with uh, uh, Glenn Robinson for the Sorcery album, which was the, a producer that, that was famous in Canada for working with uh, with Voivod and Guar and Annihilator and things like that. So he was... a um, a famous guy back then and and he we we approached him and he was all about working with us so but like i said we were such kids and 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 having our own uh, vision of of what music was at that time and he came in with a professional attitude but he tried to make sense of the chaos that we were as (laughs) musicians and uh, and for him to get him to work on this uh, it was a lot of money so we didn't get a lot, a long period of time in the studio, so we had to nail it pretty fast. And uh, this album was recorded live, the four of us in the oh, same wow. room uh, in a studio called More Nights, uh, which was really famous also at the time for albums like uh, like Rush did a lot of work there, and, and there was Celine Dion and uh, a lot of international artists. It, it was the big uh, place in Montreal, uh, Canada, to record music. So we went there with Glenn Robinson. We recorded the album live, but we did. Uh, patch up a little few things here and there with overdubs mm-hmm. but most of what you would hear at, at, at say at least 75 percent of that is is was the live takes that we did <laughs> and wow. we we mix we mixed it in one weekend and that was it send it to the the label and back in those times there was no no such thing as mastering so it was recording mixing we send it to the label all done to tape like the old fashioned way and uh, that's another thing that was in- interesting with us as a band is we went through all stage, all stages of the recording technology. Yeah, <laughs> we started we started uh, to, to tape a uh, twenty four track, the two inch tape, and uh, we did a few albums like that. And eventually, uh, the first wave of digital products came came out, and we switched to that. And we all we always try to stay cutting edge regarding recordings and studios but uh, we went through the whole uh, the whole process all the way to the latest pro tools and the new computers uh, super powerful computers we have today <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, that's that's what I had imagined because like uh, I was gonna ask about like how the the technology was, but you you got it for me. Um, yeah, because it it's changed so much in the twenty five years that like where you guys must have started to now, it's it's got to be so much easier to record and get things done as opposed to to back when you guys first started. Yeah, of course, because uh, in those years uh, things were a, a little bit. Uh, more complicated for sure and yeah. uh, all the technology that came out it made things e easier for musicians and now we all uh, we all live in different cities mm -hmm. so writing the songs often we just uh, we each have our own little recording setup at home and uh, we record and write our parts and send send stuff to each other and that's how we work uh, instead of being a in the same room all the time, the four of us. So, uh, and a lot of the stuff we use while we're doing the demos, if it's good enough, will make its way all the way onto the record. And then we just, we work prog progressively like that mm -hmm. um, and fine tune things. And, and, and then uh, eventually when everything is said and done, we, we, we said, we send the masters to the, 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 the guy that's going to mix the record. Okay. And nice. which we, we always, we always try to, to, to use a, a different guy every record because we like each album to sound unique and yeah. uh, so we we send it we send it to a, a mixture of our choice like depending on the, on the, how we feel and the vibe of each record and uh, that, that's how it goes and that's how it goes and I, I've, I've been producing and handling the recording for almost everything in the cataclysm career just because we started as a very DIY band and we did a lot of stuff ourselves. So as soon as the technology permitted to actually record things ourselves, that's we jumped on, on board and started doing things ourselves. And uh, throughout the discography, I started working uh, on the production end of the band. And instead of spending our recording budgets into various studios, we kept the money and buy gear. But we bought gear and then eventually we owned our own studio and w with professional stuff oh, nice. and we we thought it was a nicer way to spend our money as a band yeah. um, versus versus paying uh, uh, like everything to a, to a, a studio or, or, or a big producer every time yeah that's that's such a smart way to do things and I, it it's good to see a lot of bands have like taken that route of just buying their own gear and doing everything in-house as opposed to outsourcing it which uh, unfortunately it has you know changed the way that the the recording industry kind of works but i mean mm -hmm. it benefits the band way more like that's how it should be yeah you can uh, keep control on your sound that way and I, I guess you don't have an external guy that comes in and tells you to change your songs or to change this because he believes that's the better way um I mean, I mean, sometimes you can benefit from experienced producers to come in and tell you things, but I think in this jar specifically, it's important to stay who you are yeah. uh, because I find, uh, sp especially the, the 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 past decades, it's kind of like uh, bands are losing a little bit of that their personality because they're going for that sound that everybody likes, and uh, at, at some point, everybody starts sounding the same, and I, I think it's a bit sad even if it's like a, a good sound it's just uh, people are losing a little bit of that their uh, their bands are losing personality a little bit because of that yeah everything's a little a little too overproduced i know exactly what you're talking about yeah <laughs> so one last thing about sorcery and then we will talk about unconquered um, yes so sorcery got a remaster at some point and uh, -huh. uh did you take care of that remastering or what was the decision yeah. behind that Yes, it's the record label was talking about re-releasing these albums, and they were uh, they wanted to do like a vinyl collection, and also for the 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 stream the streaming um, yeah. uh, the streamer uh, website and all that. And they they wanted uh, a new a new version, an updated version. So yeah, I took care of it. Like I, I had to actually nice. for sorcery it was uh, interesting because it was uh, mixed to to. Uh, to tape, so I had to actually take the tape, bring it to a place where I could convert it back into uh, wave files, oh, wow. and then use these wave files, and then do a little, uh, a little process processing to make it more uh, uh, in accordance to the, the 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 specs that we need 
for for today's uh, market. So um, yeah, yeah I, I did some work like that for for all the records. Some of them needed it more than others. Uh, the more recent stuff, I think, was still relevant to me. So I didn't touch those that much. But the the older records needed like uh, a big push, I think. And uh, yeah, Sorcery came out good, and I like the Temple of Knowledge as well, the second album, yeah. because that one that one really needed it. I find I find, and, and the new version sounds so much better than the original in my eyes. Yeah, it's always interesting seeing when bands kind of go back and remaster and change things, and you know, hearing what they kind of wanted to uh, switch around and what they envisioned that didn't quite get there in in the original sense, but. It's always a hit or miss thing, but yeah. it, it worked out for you guys because it, the technology had changed so much that it, it just made it sound so much more better. Yeah, it's it's like it's such a subjective thing because that's true. One, one fan will say like, "Yeah, I like this version better." Or like, hey, "Why did you touch it?" And then another fan was like, "No, this needed to happen, and it's much better now." So, uh, at the end of the day, you do your best. And um, that's one thing I can say about Cataclysm is we gave 250% on each of the records we have in our discography. And um, I'm proud of that factor. And and so it's that much I can say, but then it's all about if you like the stuff or not <laughs> as, as a metal fan. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's so... I don't want to use the word elitist, but picky, mm -hmm. maybe picky. Exactly. Picky. But, but it's okay. I, I mean, I, who knows why I like the stuff I like as a, as a metal fan. Yeah. And, um, I'll, I'll like some, some albums that to me are my favorites and then others totally hate and, and it's all right. I guess uh, yeah. everybody has a different, uh, a different, uh, idea of what, or, or, uh, like music it's you in a certain way so if it speaks to you then it's it's a good band or a good album for you and if it doesn't then you just uh, I, I just find sad that people are, are fast to criticize something they don't like i know instead of like uh, uh, accepted it for accept it for what it is and if you don't like it then it's just not for you but don't go out and troll bands and bash bands online because it's not your cup of tea yeah, the, the internet has given a little too much power to stuff like that. Exactly. <laughs> like people have nothing better to do. So like, oh, this band put out a terrible al album. Let's write a giant blog post about how much it sucks. <laughs> like, Man, just go listen to something else. Like, Exactly. There's enough do. music out there. Yeah. So uh, Un Unconquered comes out next mm -hmm. month. or Yeah, next month. Um, the biggest thing that I've noticed with this record is you're playing seven strings now, right? Yes. Uh, what was the decision to kind of move move over to that? Well, we have always been guys that like to push things to uh, to a different places and uh, to push the envelope of what we can do. And the seven string was always something I was thinking about bringing to the band, just because I always love that sound and I think uh, Cataclysm could benefit from that heaviness that you yeah. get from using those guitars. And uh, uh, we also uh, didn't want to alienate our fans uh, to change things too much. And also when you tour, there's a certain uh, uh, way we do things and then bringing, having to bring more equipment to play live shows could, could uh, make it difficult for us to travel and, and play festivals around the world and things like that. But we finally decided to go for it and uh, we're happy that we did because we like what it brought to the sound of our band. And, um, it's also it's just more fun and more guitars to play for me as a guitar player. <laughs> you, you you get to a whole range that we didn't get to to use before, and then you can utilize it in so many different ways. So it's just a new uh, tool to inspire inspire uh, yourself as as an artist and to write and to play. And uh, just the first time that I played a chord on 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 my seventh string, like the way we tune it, it it's tuned to F sharp, so it's super low. And then you had that chord, and it's like, brrr. <laughs> in my eyes, I, I saw twinkle in my eyes going like, yes. 
So uh, the, the, I guess the 14 year old me was super happy at that moment, and uh, we we chose to go for it. The other guys really liked the, the first few uh, songs I wrote with the seven string, so we kept going that way. And now I'm almost thinking, hey, but why not eight strings? So we can add even more stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm but, kind of uh, in the same boat as you, man. Like I was a diehard six stringer for a long time, and then I got a seven, and I was like. Oh my God, this is, it takes a little while to adjust, obviously, but once you do it, yeah. like, holy shit, it opens up so much more things to do. And like those chords, man, they just hit so much deeper and it's, it's such a fun sound to play with. Exactly. Like those, like the, and then the, the fact that you can um, move around from different register, it gives you a lot more to, to work well, like arrangement wise and all that. Yeah. So, uh, let's see, the last album came out about two years ago. So were you, are you one of those guys that's like constantly writing stuff? So was it pretty soon after that record came out, you were already writing new stuff or did it take a little while to kind of like let it marinate and then start writing for unconquered? Well, um, the, the meditation came out and, uh, we had such a busy touring schedule for that one. Cause it, it sometimes like the, we have a touring schedule, which is more like a month on the road. We come back a month home, a month on the road, and we go on and off like that. Yeah. But the meditation was kind of all at once. And when we were out for a long while. And then when I came back from the that tour, I was really inspired to start writing right away. Because uh, it's something I like to do. I, I love sitting in my studio and write music yeah and um for me it's one of my favorite parts of about being a, in a band i pr i almost prefer the writing part over the touring part <laughs> I, I love I, I love playing live but I, I i i love the writing and recording process for records i'm, I'm a bit of a nerd like that so uh, i went right away I, I came home and i I started messing around with the seven strings and so many ideas came came out. And this album was written mostly, it was me and Mauricio going back to the roots. Uh, like we were talking earlier, we, we were the, the two guys writing a, a lot of the music when we did like the sorcery and the yeah. earlier stuff. So yeah. we kind of got, got back to that uh, way of working, me and him. Uh, and we wrote the whole thing for this one. And Steph was in Europe a lot because he got married. His wife is from Austria and was back and forth between Austria and, and his place. And we did, didn't see him much uh, oh, wow. in that year. And it, it's okay because he, he did his thing. And so we just wrote music and kind of when it was all said and done, we presented it to the other guys in the band and they were uh, they were stoked about it. And we, we organized the recording. It went kind of spontaneously and was... Uh, was done really fast uh, and like not that we uh, that, that we we still paid attention and gave all our best but it just happened fast on this one and uh, yeah and we we sent everything out for the mix and we we got colin richardson to mix this one which oh, nice. is also a legendary producer from from the 90s and we always wanted to work with him and the times that we could have uh, the schedule didn't work and always something happened and now he was retired so we kept we kept bugging him like please do this record <laughs> and he, he, he said yeah why not let's do it let's uh, get into the studio and we, he mixed it and i think colin's in his 60s now and uh, he, he still got the ear for it because it sounds super modern and and then we're so happy with the the way this album sound we're hoping that he wants to do the next one as well because it was a good recipe for us. The way we do things, yeah, with with the way he mix music, I think it sounds great. Yeah, man, that's awesome to get him to come out of retirement for for your record like that. I mean, what better what better way to be like, hey, listen to how this record sounds because because of working with him and man, mm -hmm. that's such a great thing to have. Um, something I, I did notice about this record too, I haven't heard the whole thing, but man, the drums on this thing are fast mm -hmm. I mean, uh faster than i i remember from the last couple anyways uh, you're using a lot more like blast gravity kind of stuff on mm -hmm. there um was that more of an intentional thing or is that just what you felt like writing this time around i, I, I guess it's when i went back to write with mauricio I, I guess the and plus plus the fact that we we came out with all those heavy sounds with the seven string i think it brought us back to 
the reason why we're playing in this band in the first place and when we started. So I guess a lot of the root sound came came alive uh, yeah. and uh, a lot of those blast beats were part of what we used to do in the beginning. So yeah. there, there's a, they, they made sense in the song we wrote and we thought it was the best way to approach the drumming. We kind of wrote the songs and we put the drums right away because we wrote everything with a MIDI track. Okay. And uh, we put the beats together, and and we felt like that was, that was what, what was needed in those songs. And we sent everything to the drummer. The drummer was all into it, and was like, "Yeah, Elia yeah, will will we'll do it this way." And he uh, he added his own feel and his own uh, personality, of course, to the tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, but but everything came out the way we imagined and better even. So we're happy about the whole vibe of the involvement of everyone in, in this and everyone everybody gave uh, so much uh, effort to make sure this was a good record so one one final thing i want to ask here as far as the you know the legacy of the band and everything uh like i mentioned you know 25 years since your first record and here you are 2020 putting out unconquered you know when you look at everything that you guys have done as a band Obviously, the records sound extremely different, but I mean, as far as like, you know, how how much stuff you've put out there, you know, how do you feel about the legacy of the band and, you know, from where you started to where you are now? It's it's crazy. It's been a long road, but at the same time, it just felt normal to me because it's just what we do as, a, as artists. You just write music, put it out, try to promote it. And uh, I think... Uh, when you look back, you can see a whole evolution uh, in the sense that uh, you, you do your best and you do what you want at a certain point in time. But uh, you, uh, as, a, as an artist, you, you look back and it's a bit surreal that we have already 14 albums. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, uh, and I, I am looking at, looking at myself in the mirror. It's like, oh, holy hell, we're like mid 40s now, but I'm. I'm very appreciative of what we did. I think uh, we've been blessed to have the opportunity to have this kind of uh, life and career. Like for us, this has been a passion, but it's been a lifestyle. We, we fully lived being a metalheads and we still do. Yeah. And uh, it's helping us through uh, just on the happiness level. I think it's great that we can just, this is our job. You go to work with friends, doing stuff that you like to do and we we uh, we have this discussion sometimes like about uh, and, and on one end we're super we feel blessed and, and lucky that we got what we got and we there's a certain respect when we write music and we record and put out new stuff about uh trying to do our best because it, it, this band and this career gave us so much personally so we our way to give it back is to respect what it is and to push ourselves to keep writing killer music and uh, on on the other end like we look at the future and we're older and we, we have these talks like uh, how long can we keep this going but we want we will go as long as we are happy doing it i think uh, the 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 day that we look at each other and it's not fun anymore or or it starts or it starts getting old or being about the paycheck i think that's when we're gonna quit and do something else but uh, for now, I think we're still having fun. Uh, hopefully, we still have a good 10 years in us, maybe 10, 15 years, who knows? Yeah. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, you don't hear that too often from people. It's it's nice and refreshing to hear like a little bit of honesty behind like where you are as a band and how you're feeling about everything in the future. So it's, it's really awesome to hear that. Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's important to be honest with the fans, but be honest with yourself as, yeah. as a person but we're we're really uh, committed to to this and we love what we do still and we feel great like i think in in a way when you're a band uh, living this life this kind of life for a while and you don't go out and do crazy drugs and uh, alcohol over the top for years i think you it, it like us we always took care of ourselves and and we uh I think it helps you age in a good way because you, we still feel super young and, and uh, you don't have the stress that sometimes other people live in different kind of jobs. So uh, yeah. we we love what we do and we f feel happy about it. And I think I think it helps in the longevity uh, uh, conversation as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. 
Um, well, I, I'm a little over time here that I was supposed to take, but um, man, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk about the history of the band and kind of juxtaposing both these records and uh, deep diving into them a little bit. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Yeah. So uh, the record comes out September 25th on Nuclear Blast, correct? Yes, uh, it's coming out. I think they're they're gonna release a couple more singles before the release date. Yeah. They, they have like a this promotional plan uh, behind it. But yeah, September twenty fifth. Uh, pick up a copy if you uh, want to support the band. Um, you can pick it up on our website cataclysm uh, This is cool because it, it, it the money goes to us directly Perfect. or or from the the record label Nuclear Blast where they have different versions of it as well so uh check it out uh, i think is one of our best albums i think we everything came out uh the stars were aligned for this one so give it a shot and uh, hopefully if you like it uh, let us know that you like it <laughs> yeah, don't, don't always always <laughs> yeah yeah we're we're always uh we're always happy to hear back from our fans but uh, if you ate it just uh, let us know why as well and and, and it's cool <laughs> it's cool when it's like a, a contra and constructive criticism and not a full-on bashing <laughs> yeah that's fair that's fair well john francois man thank you so much i really appreciate it um good luck with the record and hopefully when the world figures its shit out and the play goes away you guys can tour on it and everything else too man awesome looking forward to it <laughs> all right man have a good rest of your day all right. you too Bye bye. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dude!